In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the domain of a composite function. So let's say that f of x is 4 divided by x plus 2. And we're going to say g of x, this is also going to be a rational function. Let's say g of x is 1 over x. So with this information, go ahead and find the composite function f of g of x and determine the domain. Right now, if we look at the domain for each function individually, we can see that x cannot be equal to 0 for g of x. You cannot have a 0 in the denominator of a fraction. If you do, 1 over 0 is an undefined value. For f of x, if you set x plus 2, well, x plus 2 can't be equal to 0. So that means that x can't be negative 2 for f of x. So those are the limitations for those two functions. But what about the composite function f of g of x? What is the domain for that? What we're going to do is take g and put it inside of f. So we're going to replace this x with g, or 1 over x. So f of g of x is going to be 4 over 1 over x plus 2. Now, when finding the domain of a composite function, it's important to know that if x is not in the domain of g, then it can't be in the domain of the composite function f of g of x. So this fact gets transferred to this function. And you can see it here as well. In this complex fraction that we have, we can't have a zero in the denominator. So automatically we can see that x cannot be zero. But here's a question for you. Can x be negative two in this composite function? The answer is yes, it can be negative two. If we were to plug in negative two, there's no problem with this. This is negative one half plus two, so that's 1.5. Four divided by 1.5 is an okay value. So for the outer function, negative two didn't work when it was an individual function, but as a composite function, x can be negative two. Now, here's another point that you need to keep in mind. Any x value for which g of x is not in the domain of f must not be in the domain of the composite function f of g of x. So what does that mean? The x value that gives you negative 2 will not work. So what number can we plug into x that will give us a g value of negative 2. This will be the reciprocal 1 over, this will be 1 over negative 2. If we were to calculate g of negative 1 half, this will be 1 over negative 1 over 2, this will be negative 2. And we can't plug this into f, so that's not going to work. Because if you plug a negative 2 into this, you get a 0 on the bottom. So therefore, x cannot be equal to negative 1 half. Another way in which we could see this is by simplifying the complex fraction. If we multiply the top and the bottom by x, f of g of x is going to look a lot different. So on top, we're going to have 4x. On the bottom, we have x times 1 over x. These will cancel and then x times 2 is 2x. So when x and 1 over x cancel, we're going to get 1. And then x times 2x, that's just going to be 2x. Now notice that we can have a 0 in the denominator of the composite function. So this cannot be 0. Subtracting both sides by 1, we get 2x cannot be negative 1. Divided by 2, we get x cannot be negative 1 half. And it makes sense. Remember, 
we can have a negative 2 in f. And an x value of negative 1 half will make g negative 2, which will invalidate f. So that's why we have this in the composite function. So that's why we get that additional answer. So this is the x value that will produce a g value of negative 2 that goes into this function, making it undefined in the bottom of that fraction. So now that we know the values that x cannot be, how do we express this on a number line? So we're going to have an open circle at negative 1 half and 0. X could be anything else other than those two values. So we could shade everything except negative 1 half and 0. On the left, we have negative infinity. On the right, positive infinity. So to express the domain in interval notation, it's going to be negative infinity to negative 1 half union negative 1 half to 0 union 0 to infinity. So that is the domain of the composite function f of g of x. For the sake of practice, let's try another example. Let's say that f of x is 5 over x minus 3 and g of x is 2 over x. Go ahead and determine the domain. So first, let's focus on the inside function g of x. We know that x cannot equal 0. Next, let's find f of g of x. Let's put g inside of f. So it's going to be 5 over. Let's replace this with g, or 2 over x, and then minus 3. So in this part of the composite function, we can see that x cannot be 0 in this fraction. Now we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by x to get this in a different format. So it's going to be 5x over, these will cancel, giving us 2, and then minus 3x. So now we have a new denominator. This part cannot equal 0. So 2 minus 3x can't be equal to 0, which means if we add 3 to both sides, I mean 3x to both sides, 2 cannot equal 3x. Divided by 3, we get that x cannot equal 2 over 3. If we were to take this and plug it into g, 2 over 2 over 3 will give us 3. And that will invalidate f because x can't be 3 for f. So we can see why we get this value. So to express the answer in interval notation, it's going to be the domain is going to be from negative infinity to 0, union 0 to 2 over 3, union 2 over 3 to infinity. So now you know how to find the domain of a composite function. Now let's work on one more problem for the sake of practice. Let's say we have f of x is equal to x squared plus 3. And let's say that g of x is equal to the square root of 4 minus x. Go ahead and determine the domain of the composite function f of g of x. So let's start with the inside function, g of x, because the values of x that restricts g will also restrict the composite function. When dealing with square roots, you can have a negative number inside a square root. So the inside part, 4 minus x, has to be greater than or equal to 0. Subtracting 4 from both sides, we have negative x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Multiplying both sides by negative 1, we get x is less than or equal to 4. 
whenever you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number and when you're dealing with inequalities, you need to change the direction of the inequality. So this is the restriction for g of x. Now notice that f is a polynomial function. It has no restrictions. So the domain of f is going to be all row numbers, negative infinity to infinity. So when we combine f and g, this is going to be the only restriction. So f of g of x is going to be x squared plus 3. So where x was, we're going to put g inside x. So that's the square root of 4 minus x. The square and the square root will cancel. So we're left with 4 minus x plus 3. 4 plus 3 is 7, so we get 7 minus x. So this form of the composite function looks like it doesn't have any restrictions on x. But because it came from g of x, which had a square root function, it does have restrictions, which is what we have here. So this is the domain for the composite function f of g of x. If we were to graph it on a number line, we would have a closed circle at 4, but we would shade to the left. So it starts from negative infinity and it ends to 4. Now 4 is included, so we're going to have a bracket instead of a parenthesis. So that is the domain of this composite function f of g of x.